All right, let's talk about BigQuery pricing. So you're, you're probably wondering, how do I pay for BigQuery? Well, BigQuery is pay as you go. So you're only going to be charged as you consume, either storage or querying data. Um, let's talk about storage real quick. Storage is broken out into two main areas. You have active storage, which means that your data has been modified in the last 90 days. And then the opposite, which is long-term storage. So that means your data has not been modified in the last 90 days. And with long-term storage, that also means there's a reduction in your storage cost. At the time of this video, the storage cost, I believe, is cut in half. So your active storage may cost two cents per gigabyte per month. And then with long-term storage, that would drop to um, one cent per gigabyte per month. As for querying your data, there are two types of pricing models. You can pay on demand, which is just pay as you go. So you could pay $5 per terabyte scanned per month, or you can pay for a flat rate plan. And that would mean that you're gonna purchase a number of slots in BigQuery. And we'll get into what slots are in a future video. So those are the two main ways. We suggest starting out with on demand and then moving to a flat rate model if you've reached a certain threshold in monthly spend with BigQuery that would justify paying for flat rate pricing. There's also a free tier in BigQuery. So any data stored that's under 10 gigabytes per month is free. And if you're querying less than a terabyte per month, that's also free. And so keep that in mind. Um, BigQuery is a very affordable option if your uh, data sizes are small, uh, both from a storage and query perspective. It's essentially free. So some best practices uh, with respect to BigQuery pricing. Estimate your query costs before running a query. Only select the columns you need. Preview the data. And remember, in SQL, normally using limit will reduce the amount of data that's queried. In BigQuery, limit does not actually limit the query size. Let's look at some examples of estimating the data sizes you'll be querying in BigQuery. So in this example, we're using the GitHub repos commits table. This table is pretty large. It's almost 800 gigabytes in size and 247 million rows. So definitely a big table and you're gonna definitely wanna try and limit the amount of data you're querying. So the first thing I recommend doing is opening up the preview tab and just looking at the data, uh, this is especially helpful if you've never seen the data before and you want to uh, get an idea of the composition of this data. Now in, a, in another database, you might just do a select star uh, with a limit and uh, that will allow you to inspect the data. In this case, I don't advise doing that. Um, this uh, green text here will tell you how much data you're going to query when this query is uh, run, when you hit the run button. Um, and here's a couple things we want to point out. First, limit only returns the number of rows specified in the limit. So if you have a limit 1,000, the query results uh, will uh, be 1,000. If you lower it to 10, you'll get 10 results returned back to you. This does not mean that BigQuery doesn't um, process the entire data, right? It's uh, this is something you need to be aware of. When you do limit, notice that this is still 800 gigabytes. If I go to 1,000, still 800 gigabytes. And when I get rid of limit, it's still 800 gigabytes. So just remember, limit is used for returning results to your query panel. It does not reduce the amount of data that you're querying. Uh, one other thing we want to talk about are um, best practices around selecting columns. So select star is typically a bad idea in BigQuery. You want to select the columns as you need them. So notice by selecting the commit column here, we've reduced the query size to 9.7 gigabytes. If we add in the next column, which is tree, uh, that increases the amount of data processed to 19.3 gigabytes, but it's certainly less than the 800 gigabytes uh, in the original select star query. 
Another best practice for estimating your BigQuery costs is to use the uh, Google Cloud pricing calculator. This is useful for when you want to know how much you can expect to pay um, per month for BigQuery. So in this case, maybe we have you know, 100 gigabytes of data stored and we expect a query maybe one terabyte per month. So in this case, uh, you know, it's pretty affordable, $1.80 US per month. Um, if you run into a situation where this estimated cost starts exceeding um, maybe $10,000, uh, we recommend that you check out the flat rate pricing option instead. Um, you're just going to purchase a number of slots here. Let's say we, the same scenario, we had 200 gigabytes or 100 gigabytes, was it? And, um, and we wanted 500 slots. It's probably overkill for this amount of data, but we're just doing an experiment here. Let's add this to our estimate. So, you know, 500 slots will cost you $10,000. So as you can see, there's different options for evaluating your BigQuery pricing. Definitely recommend that you spend some time understanding your data storage and your query requirements um, before you dive into BigQuery with large amounts of data. So hopefully this has been helpful. Again, to recap, avoid select star. Uh, limit uh, is for appearances only. And uh, use preview. And be sure and use the uh, pricing calculator.